Next into the tank is a modern version of a traditional machine. Hey, sharks. I'm Brian Schimmerlich. And I'm Steve Bofield. We're from New York City, and our company is Vengo. We are seeking $2 million for 12.5% of our company. When you hear vending machine, what comes to mind? Most people imagine desperately shaking this old machine, trying to get that bag of potato chips to drop out. These machines are huge, they're old, they're ugly. And so they get hidden in the basement. Vengo is taking vending out of the basement into the spotlight with the latest technology. So what's so different about Vengo? Everything. Let's start with size and appearance. Our slim form factor and attractive design is the ticket to exclusive high traffic areas. Vengo hangs on the wall like a picture frame and requires zero floor space. Let me show you how it works. What Vengo does is we bring video content to the point of purchase. So Brian will go ahead and browse the products. It looks like the bottle breacher has caught his eye. He adds it to the cart, clicks checkout. Wait a minute, Brian. I don't see any slots for coins. Vengo is totally cashless, totally digital, very, very fast. Once the payment is made, our team at Vengo, back in New York, is automatically notified of the sale, and that's just scratching the surface of everything we can do with the valuable data from each and every vending machine out in the field. It's that easy. Who's ready to Vengo? So it's small in size. Yes. Does that mean that anything that you sell out of it has to be small in size? Absolutely. This is about the largest item that we can fit, but we can actually fit 100 products. How do we fit so much and so little is we have an amazing team of aerospace engineers. Is he an aerospace engineer? Yes, that's my background. I was an aerospace engineer for about nine years. What happened to you? Uh, and now you're making vending machines. Now I'm making vending exactly. machines. Exactly. I saw the opportunity, I quit my aerospace job, and I jumped into the... See what happened with the space program? We're not a vending operator, and we're not replacing vending machines. But we are a software and media company that manages this digital network from the cloud. So here's our business model. We sell the hardware to vending companies. So, so you're let's go selling from there. to so the let's go vending there, machine right? guys Exactly. So let's go from there. What does one of those cost for me to buy if I'm a vending machine guy? Yep. What does it cost you to make? Yeah. You're not going to love this, so bear with me. We build it for $2,500. We sell it for $2,500. Ooh. <laughs> OK, so you charge a monthly exactly. then. So what do you charge on the monthly then? We charge you $20 per Vengo per month. And what do I get for that $20? You get the front end software that controls the hardware. Do I, does that include maintenance in case it breaks? Or? Exactly. Yep. Okay. We're... So then do, do the different companies that you sell this to select and choose what's going to go in the machine? We control the media rights, and we control a significant amount of the product mix. And so you can get some of your products in as the owner of the hardware, but we're also managing this network remotely, right. working with really great products to right. get them into the Vengos across the whole network. What are your total sales? For this year, we're going to generate a million dollars. Wow. We just partnered with the largest vending machine company in the country. But Brian, you right. make money from the front of the screen. You're an ad company. Absolutely. Plain and simple, right? Let me tell you what you guys, what we're doing here. Okay. We are changing the game on retail and marketing physical products. That's a stretch. Traffic into stores is down 50% over the last three years. The impulse purchase at the checkout at the grocery store is down significantly. Brian, so I'm an advertiser. I want to advertise on the front of the screen. How do you charge me? So we're charging brands $200 per SKU, per machine, per month. Whoa. And what, wow. and what that wow. gets them that's is, a, that's a lot. We actually purchase the product wholesale. We sell it retail. We make sure our vending partners can make an attractive margin, and the product so is this, a fit. Guys, guys look, I get it. This is a digital end kit. This is a digital end kit, yeah. right? Which is great. But here, here's my issue. I invested in a company called Oasis. Five women out of Boston. They go into women's restrooms, yep. and all the products are women's. Now, we've designed our own box. I see them as competitive, so for those reasons, I'm out. Understood. Brian, well, I mean, why don't you talk about this $16 million valuation yes, you put in front yeah. of the Sharks here? <laughs> Let's $2 million for 12.5%. I'm going to make the assumption that it's not supported by cash flow because you don't have any. 
So it must be some other reason you think you're so valuable. It must be that you have, have you raised the money or already? We raised $3.4 million from some of the best investors out there. The best yes. investors in America are right here. Exactly, that's why them. we're here. And we always get great pricing. I make sure of that. I know you <laughs> do. Just explain to me how it's worth 16 million today. You might do a million in sales this year. Will you yeah. make any money on that million? No, we will not. We will lose about 300,000. Uh, and then next year we will break even. And so why is it worth that much? We've got an amazing team and we've spent three years building out this platform. I've partnered, let's not forget, I've partnered with the largest vending company in the country. And we've partnered with the nation's largest chocolate manufacturer, as well as several other big brands. It's very smart mm -hmm. to have point of purchase video if you can have it in exactly. something. But on here, do they have to be relative to what's inside the machine? Or are you selling advertising space to anything? We're focused on the differentiator. The differentiator is coupling retail, point of purchase with media, extracting tons of data about how consumers behave. Guys, the valuation is insane. I'm out. Thank you. Uh, I don't like it. What I find confusing about it is you're in the advertising business, and there's a lot of competition for point of sale advertising, but you're also selling products, but you're only selling products that are in the machine. Yep. And one day, maybe, if you get big, you'll do advertising for other things, too. So is it a display advertising company, or is it a pseudo vending? This business model is just too complicated and unfocused for me. I'm out. Guys, can I ask if your balance sheet has any debt on it? We have absolutely no debt. How would you like some? I'm open to it. I'm open to hearing what you got. What about I lend you, this goes into my venture debt fund, I give you $2 million and I'll take 6% of the company in equity, which is half of what you asked. So $2 million in debt. Yeah. And? I'll loan the company a 36-month loan, three okay. years. That's enough proof of concept here. Two million, and I want six percent of the equity for providing the facility. Okay, that's why they call it Mr. Wonderful. And there's no interest payments on the debt, oh, and there's no strings interest. attached. Are you kidding? It's a fund. It has to make at least seven percent. Is my lowest rate. Horrible. Here's Mr. Advice with no checkbook. Isn't that wonderful? No one's written the more checks or bigger checks on this show than I have, and I'm telling you, well, you already know, it's horrible. I have a venture debt fund. This is what I do all day long with yep. tech companies. So, Mr. Wonderful, yes. how did you calculate 6% on the equity side? I just asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just what he easy. wants. I just want to wet my beak in the equity, and I deserve to. That's yeah. a big old beak. <laughs> I love my beak. I look at this, and it's a little confusing for me. If you're going up on a wall, right, you're taking up that space. So the space below it now is empty. I don't see why you wouldn't lengthen that. It's a little odd to me at the moment. Like, I, I personally feel it needs some work. Lori, is it possible, given that we're asking for a significant amount of money, you is are. it possible that you guys would consider coming in together? Have you guys ever think, partnered up before? I think I'll bring you in on that deal, Lori. I mean, you've raised a lot of money, you're asking for a lot of money. With 3.4 million, we've built a network of 150 machines, soon to go to 250. We've partnered with the largest vending company in the country. The vending market is a large, slow-moving industry. It's seven billion. So there's a lot of opportunity here to create retail. So if I go in with Kevin at the deal that he offered you. And I'd be happy to do a debt deal with you, but the 6% the is, is Well, way what's high. your counter? My counter offer would be, Two million at a seven percent interest rate for one percent equity. Oh, it's not 1%. enough. One percent. I don't get out of bed for that. But also, too, we work really hard for our money. It's huge well, to we get two sharks. We work hard for our money too. It's huge to get two sharks. You're asking for a lot of money, though, guys. One percent is a no. Yeah, that's it doesn't clear. Work. Brian, another counter. That's my last counter. One percent of equity. That's all you're willing to give up. I'd love to make a deal with you guys, but it's got to be in the right. Hang of on, the he's about to make another counter. I'll do the deal: two million dollars, seven percent, thirty-six months, three percent equity. You got to pay something for two sharks. Well, you don't Kevin, get that hang on, is Lori in on that? Four percent. Before you do it, two each. Four. Okay, here's the deal: we'll give you the two million dollars. I've spoken to my partner, Lori. You get two sharks. 
It's a 7% interest loan for three years, which mm -hmm. is enough to prove your concept. And we want, when we close the deal with you, 4% equity, 2% each. It's a done deal, my friend, if you say yes. <laughs> so we, we know the venture debt market, and what's market is a Here's little bit higher. Here's the difference. Higher. Venture debt from any firm yep. is one thing. Venture debt from Mr. Wonderful and Lori, Queen of QVC, yeah. that has huge value to you. You become the it kids. You're a Shark Tank deal. You've got two sophisticated investors from Shark Tank who care about you, and you come into the Shark Tank ecosphere. All idea. of a sudden, you're, a you're on TV man. every yeah, day. Good pitch. So I'm going to provide one more counter, and this would be our best offer. We can't give up 4% equity. What's your counter, Brian? It would be 2.5% of the equity. And we'll pay you back, and we'll work to set the terms that you guys are comfortable with. 3.5%. 3.5%. We'll, we'll do it at 35 Ooh. Three and a half percent is really too much for us. Two and a half percent is final offer. And we'd love to have you guys. <laughs> okay, look, last offer, and you should take this, you'd be foolish not to. We'll do it for three percent. You got a deal. Oh. <laughs> wow. I didn't wow. think that was bad. Thank you, guys. Very interesting. Thank you about this. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Next project. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're really excited to have two sharks. Kevin's going to bring us his financial wizardry. Lori's got her portfolio of products. We've built a big business over the last three years, but we're really just scratching the surface of what we want to achieve. And so we're ready to go to the next level. First into the tank is a better way to enjoy plant-based milk. Hi, Sharks. My name is Ari Tolwin. And I'm Joe Savino. We're from New York, and we're seeking $1 million oh. in exchange for 5% oh. of our business. Wow, you got our attention. Sharks, milk today means something totally different from what the milkman used to deliver to our homes. Sure, some of us still drink cow's milk, but most of us have switched to almond milk, oat milk, or even hemp milk. But sharks, that comes at a price. Most of those milks are hyper-processed, filled with gums, preservatives, and fillers galore. Well, sharks, that's where we come in. Move on over, cow's milk. Because making fresh, dairy-free milk just became utterly easy. Introducing new milk. We built a custom machine for grocery stores where shoppers can make delicious, nutritious, pure, dairy-free milk at the push of a button. We use the best ingredients, organic almonds from Spain for our almond milks. A blend of organic cacao, vanilla bean, and maple for our chocolate milks. And a whole lot more. Our new milks are homemade without the mess or the fuss. We're on a mission to bring plant-based diets and zero-waste lifestyles to the world. So Sharks, I just have one question. Who wants to milk this deal for all it's worth? <laughs> sharks, in front of you are a flight of delicious dairy-free milks for each of you to try. But before you do so, Mark, you've mentioned you're dairy-free. Come on up and make some fresh milk for yourself. Sure. So you can select almond milk or oat milk? I'm gonna go with almond milk because I've had it, so I'll know what it tastes like in comparison. Great. So just press that almond milk button and then start on the bottom. So the machine is actually making it fresh. It's not a concentrate or anything else in there. It's taking pure organic almonds from Valencia and making the milk right now. That's fast, that's cool. The almond milk's very good. It tastes nothing like the store brand. The milk I just made is incredible. You can tell it's fresh almonds. It's incredible. Just to understand what's in the machine, give us the choices. So the first thing about New Milk is that we're uh, really a food tech company and we built a platform. Right now we have almond milk and oat milk in there, but we could do cashew, we could do hemp. If that becomes popular, we could do sesame. It's really limitless. So how long does it last and what would be the expiration date on one of Great these? Great question. It'll have a seven to 10 day shelf life and it has to stay in the fridge. I mean, I think that's the thousand pound gorilla in the room. You know, coming to the Shark Tank, you want to think big, right? Yeah, right. You're asking for a million bucks. Obviously you need capital to build out and lease these machines to all the locations. That's a different kind of business model because they require maintenance, they require you know, the capital to build them, yeah. 
And then you also have to get the space inside the grocery store to give you what looks to me like about 10 square feet. Barbara, you're a real estate mogul. You understand the value of square footage. I'll tell you exactly what it is in Midtown Manhattan for a street location, it's 3,000 a foot in a primary location. Yep. How big is that? So it's, it's eight square feet. The machines average $50,000 per year per machine. And so when you think about That's it- That's in revenue. In, in revenue, yep. And it's unmanned and we pay no rent at all. What does a machine cost? Uh, the machines are $30,000 each. They'll come down to 15 at You know, scale. guys, I think it's a genius idea. Number one, you're reducing grocery stores' perishable loss, right? Yes. Number right. two is you're attracting new customers. I like that uh, that whole concept. But were you in this area before in yeah. traditional business? Like, tell us a little bit about you, yourselves. Yeah, so uh, I come from the food and beverage world. Before this, I did aviation catering uh, for commercial jets, private jets. So. If you guys flew to New York, you have eaten our food. Then I started my own co-packing uh, company doing food and beverages. Uh, after that, I left and I started this with Ari. I'm also a, a second time entrepreneur in the space. I had a brand called Happy Tree Maple Water. I had national distribution of about uh, 8,000 stores. Did you have an exit on that water company? Uh, no, I shut it down actually after we started this. I have a question. What would Mark pay for that bottle of almond milk that he took away? Yeah, you'd pay $2 for the, for the bottle. That's a one-time uh, charge. And if you brought it back, you'd pay $3.99 to refill it. OK, it's $3.99 for the almond milk, $2 for the bottle. How much goes to the grocery store? Yep, so uh, the grocery store takes about a third. All right, so how much have you raised? Uh, we've raised $12 million. Whoa! Wow. Wow. What was the last valuation? Uh, our last valuation was $40 million pre-money. So we've actually negotiated with our investors in advance to give you uh, a shark-appropriate deal. Guys, is there a bigger picture here? I, this is obviously a big picture. Yes. Hit him, Joe. So this is our countertop device. Oh. And this is the bottle that goes with it. Wow. We so took a grocery machine. We shrunk it down so it works on your countertop so you now can have the best. that right there is a necessity for the family, I think. What is that going to cost the consumer? It's going to be about $85 landed. That's your cost. What was your plan to sell it to them for then? Uh, $199. Can you show us how that small machine works? This is actually just a 3D rendering prototype. OK, guys, let's get into the numbers. Just the basics, please. Yep. Top line, bottom line, top line, bottom line, last three years. Yeah, so 2018, $40,000 of revenue, one machine, partial year. What you lose? Spent a lot on R&D, so we spent about $2 million on R&D in 2018. Losses were two mil. Correct, approximately. 2019. 320 top line. We ended the year with 10 machines. How much you lose, And then we spent $3 million on R&D. So $5 million total uh -huh. losses so far. Now we're getting to some critical wow. mass here. Yeah. What happens in the third year? So third year is this year. Uh, we would have ended the year in about a $6 million year, but because of coronavirus, our launch with Kroger, some growth with Whole Foods, a launch with Gelson's and some other regional retailers were delayed. So what do you think losses will be this year? This year, it's going to be about $2 million as well, mostly okay, so R&D So spend. 7 mil in the ground so far. how much so cash far? do you have in the bank? 3.5 million. You projected six, but where do you think you'll land now? Uh, this year, we're going to be like 400K by the end of the year. In sales? Yeah. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. You said you projected six million for this year, but you feel you're gonna end at 400. Yeah, so we would've, we would've ended up with 100 machines at the end of the year. Can I get your attention just for a moment, please? I've been sitting here listening to every word. I still don't get it. And I'm paying attention <laughs> like crazy. Ash, I'm sitting here feeling like I'm back in second grade failing again, because I don't know what the hell the teacher is talking about yet again. You talk so much that I can't grab a single word. I'm sure you've got something good there. I don't know what the heck it is, but I'm out. I'm confused too. I'm out. Lori, you can help us bring this to millions of people around the world. And I see you may be struggling a little bit, but I think you want to do it. Problem for me is, you know, you only have so much time in here. There's a lot to explain about your business model. Right. And I don't think we've gotten a lot of those answers out. You're asking for a million dollars for 5%. You're losing money. This is a prototype, so you don't even know yet. But we don't we know if it works. We actually have five of these uh, countertops in the field, but they're stainless steel models for coffee shops. You came in asking for a pretty hefty sum. It's just not investable for me right now. I'm sorry, I'm out. Joe, what do you sell the stainless steel commercial unit? Uh, 699. And what do they cost you to make? 300 bucks. 300 bucks. All right, guys, look. I thought you were nuts when you first walked out here, but now I have a different opinion. You did a very good job in presenting the opportunity. Thank I you. I don't agree with my fellow sharks. I get what you're doing. It's extremely interesting. 
I'm gonna make you an offer. I actually think there's a huge fundamental demand for your product. And I love watching Mark go nuts over uh, plant-based stuff. You know, I'm a modified vegan. I only eat vegan on Tuesdays. <laughs> so, Be serious. The, uh, the structure is difficult here because you've already raised so much capital. I would stick this in my venture debt fund and I'd do an offer like this. I will loan you a million dollars at nine and a half percent interest for three years. That will cost you 8,000 a month. And I will take 5% equity that you offer. You know, I don't know what Mark's gonna do, but it gets you into my sphere of the shark world. And you can talk to any of my entrepreneurs. I do a hell of a job on digital for them. So if you're going after consumers, I can help you. Yeah, so first of all, I really appreciate the offer. Um, we do believe you can bring a lot of value to the business. It's not what we had in mind uh, when we walked in here, so we want to at least continue to engage. But it's an offer. Absolutely, it's Absolutely. great. Believe me, I was not planning on giving you a million bucks when I first saw this thing. Okay, so here's the thing. So you've got $3 million left in the bank for two products. I obviously love the stainless steel version that you're putting in coffee shops right now. I think that'll sell like hotcakes at home. I think you'll sell a million units easily. You have it priced at $6.99, I think it'd be priced at $8.99. And given your margin at that price, you make $500 a unit. That's a lot of money. But with just $3 million in the bank between marketing, right, and inventory and receivables and everything else, you're not gonna have enough cash. So you guys know coming in, you're gonna have to negotiate. So let's just cut to the chase. 5% is not enough. Can you do 6%? No. What do you want? Okay, guys, here's my offer. I'm gonna give you $2 million. You only ask for one, I'm gonna give you $2 million. One million of that is going to be for 7% equity. The other million is going to be a loan at 3% interest, but I get an additional 3% of stock as advisory shares or straight up equity. But if you don't use the loan, you don't have to give me the 3% equity for that loan. So in total, if you use all the capital, it's $2 million for 10%. Um, do you have a little bit of flexibility? We, we really want to work with you. You can help us grow this. It can be awesome, a major global success. Do you have a little bit of flexibility? That was my flexibility. It's a, it's a great offer, Mark. We love it. Depends how much you want to change the world. Is 1% going to change? No flexibility. We're at five, seven, can't do six. You came in asking for a million, and now you have access to two million. You got a deal. Deal, oh, that's it. Nice. Appreciate it, guys. Oh, that was... <laughs> okay. Jordan, you spoke up at the right moment. <laughs> congratulations, guys. Good luck with everything. We accept the congratulations, but the work starts now. Exactly right. We just did a $2 million deal with Mark Cuban. Woo. He beat us up a little bit at the end, but we couldn't be more excited to work with him and continue to grow New Milk to be a great success. Next up is an entrepreneur who believes he has a better solution to drinking wine on the go. Hi, Sharks. My name's Andrew McMurray, and I'm here from Scarsville, New York. Our company is Zips Incorporated. I'm here today seeking a $2.5 million investment for a 10% equity stake in our company. I'm here to tell you that our single serve is like no other in the wine industry. Our company, it's all about packaging, 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 and licensing, licensing, licensing. And Kevin, I think that should be music to your ears. You are a wise grasshopper. So <laughs> the single serves that are out in the market today, what you might be most used to that you've seen on airplanes, the little airplane bottles, little plastic cups, we've got a wine glass. It's got weight and it's got strength. This glass is actually so strong that I can stand on it. Oh my God. Wow. 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 Wow is right. To open this glass of wine, you're simply gonna unzip the outer clean wrap. This recyclable outer wrap acts as a UV protectant to the wine, which in single serve wine, shelf life mm -hmm. is king. Now, to open the wine, you're simply gonna unscrew the lid. Oh. Attach wow. it to the bottom. Very clever. Now, That's great. to open the wine, you're simply gonna lift and peel. One of the best parts about this now, the lid comes back off, screws back on. This glass falls over, you're not spilling any wine out of it. So let me quickly give you guys each a glass so you can hold it. 
In our opinion, our package is going to become to the wine industry what the aluminum can became to the soda industry. Cheers. Cheers. So for viewers out there, and you, Lori, who weren't around when this happened, Copa de Vino was another single-serve wine deal that came in the tank twice. Both time got offers, and he never accepted either of them. Andrew, why is it different than Copa de Vino? It's different in that we own the patents, and Copa de Vino assured us they had patent on sealing a glass of wine this so, way. So, so how have you not breached that patent? Actually, the company that owns the rights to that glass and to that technology is a company based out of France. In speaking with the owner of the company, he told us that the previous entrepreneur, essentially he's a like a franchisee. So he had the rights to use his technology for his glass. So what is the difference between your two patents? The shelf life. That's you know what it boils down to. Our glass lasts for well over a year shelf life. We're in shelf life testing right now with three of the top 10 global brands in the, in the world today. One I can tell you about, which is Yellowtail. They do up close to 10 million cases a year in the US market. So what I'm trying to clarify with certainty, because been down this road a long time ago, and by the way, you're doing better than the other guy, because he was sweating like a pig by this point. <laughs> the point is, you're telling me, after having visited the owner of the patent, that there is no breach. They have agreed that you do not infringe on their patent. That is 100% correct. Is your patent unique not only to the form factor, but also to coat the glass with that plastic? Correct. The mix of the plastic that's in here is proprietary to us. Along that's with the exterior package. Along so with the exterior, things, that's also a part of the patent, is the UV so, wrap, the shrink wrap on the outside. So those two things, OK, OK, let's put the patent aside for a moment. OK, sure. You, you have no desire to make your own wine. You want to license this packaging to other big wine manufacturers and let them sell it. The answer would be no and yes and yes and no. So we actually have our Zips brand. That's what's in front of you right now. That is our brand. Is it in Costco? It's not in Costco yet. And that's what? a big piece of why I'm, uh, why I'm here talking to you today. What are your sales? OK. The project started about 16 months ago. We were working with Fetzer Winery. The deal with them was to get into six Major League Baseball parks for opening day of 2013. And we did $130,000 with them in licensing fees. They took your technology and put their wine into it and sent it over to the arenas? Correct. Is that the license? Correct. What was the percentage on that license? It's 15 cents a glass. How much money is totally invested in this venture right now? $8.5 million. Oh, wow. wow. And where did that money come from? We got about 25 investors total. We've got six retired Goldman Sachs partners, three of which own a professional sporting franchise. And the rest of this group, these are all Wall Street professionals. But the question becomes, if you have all those team owners, then why are you asking us for the money? I want all five of you guys at the table with me. What's the sell through? What's your total sales? The Zips brand that you're holding in your glass right now, we're currently down about $650,000 in sales. What does it cost at retail? A glass of Zips. Two ninety nine. dollars Look. Very few people will buy a glass of wine for three bucks. We're already in 1,200 stores. We just got Walmart this What's week. What's it cost you to make? It cost me 95 cents. Ooh. Look, in America, 97% of wine is sold for under $9.95 a bottle. So where this packaging idea has so much merit in terms of its delivery, it fails on its pricing. When the average consumer says to himself, I can get five and a half glasses for $9.99 and I have to pay $3.99 for one. That's the problem. Yeah, but That's... this is, you know, but the, you, you can't dismiss, but like you've you said, you can't dismiss the package. you've only got $650,000 in sales, my friend. That's nothing in the wine business. I mean, everyone we've spoken to is comfortable at the $2.99 price. They haven't sold That's through the tipping point. They haven't like tested said. the market. They haven't sold it through. $650,000 in 1,200 stores is poo-poo. Poo-poo. Pee-pee poo-poo. Let's not get hung up on those. We're now I'm hung up. I know it's getting delisted. It's not going to no, work. We're talking about my brand. Look, I'm not a wine connoisseur. But even then, I would take MD2020 from a quality perspective over a brand with a zipper named Zips. Huge mistake. I'm out. Let me tell you a very brief story that I think will be sobering for you. I went to see Costco and talk to them about wine. They're the largest buyer of wine on Earth, sure. 5.2 billion in wine. I said, I'm going to the wine business. He says, who cares? There's 5,000 applications a year to put wine from all around the world into Costco. Go prove that O'Leary means something in the wine business. 
took me two years to do it. I go back to Costco. And she says, impressive. But now you have to deal with a new price point. We talked about single serve. We talked about 750 milliliter bottles. We talked about my brand. Did you get your wine into Costco? I'm negotiating it right now. It's not in yet. Good question. That would be a no. OK, what is your loss going to be this year? We, I don't want to look at it as a loss. I want to look at it as a reinvestment back. Why not simply license to the big manufacturers, to the big wineries, and let them take all of that? You're putting up enormous amounts of capital. That's not the purpose of a licensing deal. Why do any of it? Well, I mean, hindsight is always 2020. That's it, the answer? Now is it. it no. Now it's too far in. He's got no choice. OK, so at the price of $2.99 that you want to sell it at, if you don't get the sell through up to, call it, 10 million units in the next two years, you're screwed. You'll run out of runway. So the real issue is getting back to how we started our conversation today. When we know everybody in America, which is 97%, buy wine at under $9.99. That's 97% of the market. And, where, and where's that fact from? I, everything I'm telling you is a fact. You're going to go find this out on your own. My gut feeling is I would not feel comfortable investing this amount of money with this amount of risk. I'm out. But to, obviously, I respect that and I appreciate it. But you know, to open a category that's never been done before isn't easy. It's been done before. No. The guy's been standing there twice. He was here twice. To clear the air in that sense, I mean, we're not a copycat. I've been doing the single serve wine you know, since 2008. I think brilliant design. I love it. From my perspective, I think that there's a great use for it in certain applications. But all the rest of this is so complicated. You have so many partners, it's so much money, that for that reason, I can't see my way through this. And so I'm out. You know, when Copa de Vino was here, I really liked the product then. I liked the better product, because I think you have a better product. But my issue is exactly the same as it was. I don't care that you've raised eight and a half million. For me, it is very, very fundamental. It's a licensing deal. I don't understand why we're having this discussion. Kevin's going to beat the crap out of you because you can't get below a certain price point. But you can't get below a certain price point because you've taken on all the risk. If you were simply licensing it, that would be somebody else's problem. I don't like the path that you're going down. I'm out. All right, look, Costco is the number one buyer and reseller of wine on Earth, period. Everything about selling wine in America is known by their buying team. Which brands, which varietals, what price point, what packaging, everything. They know everything. Everything. <laughs> they don't like this price. If I team up with you, I can get this into Costco, but not at that price. You want to do $12 million open order for California alone? It's $149. You want to do a $19 million a year business with Costco? It's $149. I can make it happen. I can get you with Costco. Four sharks are out. Kevin is Andrew's last chance for a deal for his single-serve wine company, Zips. So how do you get the price down so that we can sell to Costco for $1.06? How do we do that? You've got to get the, the packaging down. And like anything, when it goes to scale, we feel we can keep driving it down. All right, I'll make you an offer. Here's the only way I'm doing your deal. I'm not interested in going down the path you're going down trying to prove out a 299 product, because I know it's not going to work. I'm two years ahead of you, OK? I want to go launch it in Costco. Do you understand the value of the offer of getting into Costco? A absolutely. OK, so what are you going to do? I'll give you $2.5 million for 10%, but I want the option to buy another $2.5 million worth of equity at exactly a $25 million valuation in the event of an exit. Which means if you sell the company for 50 million, I still get to buy it at 25. You get it? I've got to have some upside for making your company so valuable that you can sell it. And of course, all of this only happens if we get into Costco, so you have nothing to worry about. Do you understand it? Yes, I do. I'd like to have an opportunity to make a quick phone call. Yes. To check with the investors. All right. Oh, these wine guys drive me crazy. I think they're nuts not to do your deal. It's just a potential deal with Kevin. Kevin only? Kevin only. For, okay. for a 10% equity stake in the company. 
And here's the, here's the twist and the kicker. So obviously we need to discuss this. Do you see this as your way of you getting into Costco? Yeah, but wait a This is the best it? offer Kevin's ever made to somebody. Okay. So in speaking to the partners, they were intrigued. It wasn't the angle they thought that you would be coming in I at. I deserve to buy stock at a $25 million valuation, Andrew, because I brought Costco to the table. Because we got into Costco, all of a sudden you're way more valuable. Your partners know that. You should do this deal. You have no risk. Just say yes. <laughs> Trust me. Andrew, it's actually a very good deal. Andrew, are you going to take my deal or not? Don't be a fool. I'm on board. Yay. All right. Cheers. Yay. 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 Yay.